Good morning, I'm Chris. And I'm Janine. And welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. I'm Vanna White this morning. She is. Oh, hey, you know what? Merry Christmas. Ah! It's Christmas. I'm so happy. <laughs> Sorry, I love Christmas. <laughs> it's the end of my happy hat days. Yes, it is. That's such a sad day when I have to put all the Christmas hats up. You need to take a picture of every hat as you wear them and oh, post them up on Facebook. That would be fun. Yeah. Good idea. Chris and her hats. Chris and her hats. <laughs> and her <laughs> crazy sweaters. And her crazy sweaters, yes. And they all just get stuffed into the bench that I have. I have this wall bench mirror thing mm -hmm. in the living room and I open it up and I just drop a hat in and I pick a new hat out. And I drop a hat in and I pick a new hat out. And she has enough. To, to get through the, the entire month of December. I could possibly even pick days where I switch hats. <laughs> See, she has multiple hats. That's all there is to I it. I love Christmas hats. But yeah, and we hope you have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, whatever it is you're celebrating yes. for this year. Oops. And I hope that all of you, go ahead, have had a very prosperous uh, year and that next year... Oh, is even better for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Take this time to slow down a minute and enjoy your days. And your family you know? and friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most people have a couple of days off around Christmas. Yeah. So hopefully you don't spend it doing chores <laughs> and you actually take the time to relax. We are actually going to go and visit Bob's brother today. Oh, how fun. Yeah, because they didn't get to come for Thanksgiving, so we're going to go visit them for Christmas. Nice. I'm taking my daughter to the airport today. Oh, where's she going? Breckenridge, Colorado. <laughs> All those people she met in the little group when she went for like that oh, EDP yeah. thing in Seattle in yeah. August. Well, her and those seven or eight mm -hmm. people with their significant others, <clears throat> they're all going as a group. I think they rented a house. Oh, that'll be fun. And they're all going to go hang out for four, five, six days. Yes, Jeff will be like grumpy cat the whole way because he, for some reason, doesn't like traveling as much as Lexi does. He's homebody like Craig. Yeah. And so he, he's going grudgingly. He'll get over it. But he will have fun. <laughs> you will have fun, <laughs> Jeffrey. It's Breckenridge, Colorado. <laughs> You'll have fun. Get used to it. Yeah. So uh, they have to, I think they have to, their flight might leave at three. So... It'll be a quick breakfast, Christmas breakfast, when I get home and off to the airport. There you go. Oh, whatever. Guess what? It means I'm watching football. Even though I hate football right now. Stupid Browns. I know. I love hate. If, if you are a Cleveland <clears throat> person, Ohio, and, and you love the Browns, you understand my angst. She's had a rough football season this year. None of her teams are doing well. <laughs> No oh, man, listen, Coach Brent Venables, if you hear this some strange way, I believe in you. Our Sooners will be better next year. It's a rebuilding year. I can't do this whole <laughs> six and six thing. I don't know what that's like. You do now. We've always been an 11 and 0, a 12 and 0, a, you know. So not... they just passed it off. Let They're sharing. It's a new, new coach. New coach. Well. It's... Building year, like I said, everybody I has to get years. settled in. I never knew what that was like. Now you do. I was in the Bob Stoops era of we are badass. <laughs> so, yes, new. And then we'll quarter. see what the Browns do. Oh, Shows a quarter. I probably owe that pig a good 10 bucks for the <laughs> remainder of this year. <laughs> Let me tell you. So, we're going to do the schedule <clears throat> for the rest of December. No, oh, no. you're closed. I'm no. closed. I have a schedule for the rest of December. Wednesday the 28th. You do. Die day at the barn. 10 to 4. You can find me on Facebook to sign up. Yep. Just go to Alchemy. Call. Call, call somebody. Go to Alchemy. Send me a message. I'll get you in. Yeah. We'll get absolutely. there. So. January, January calendar. Brand new year. Oh, thank you, God. New instructor. I don't have to feel like a ping pong ball anymore. Um. Yeah. So, Mondays and Tuesdays, regular schedule store yep. as always because those are the only two days she's working at her real job at yep. the salon across the street so but from wednesday to saturday she has something scheduled can we wants... call that my fake job now oh, sure if you want that to. could be my fake job and this could be my real job how about they're both jobs right now until the middle of the year and we'll reassess hair clients you did not hear that <laughs> okay 
Go ahead with you the January schedule. You didn't hear the big schedule. job thing. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use my cup. So, January. January 4th, we have core spinning. Yes. And that is, I have no idea what the time is. Hold on a second. <laughs> um, five to eight. Yeah. Core spinning. You have to have a beginner spinning workshop under your belt. Yep. And have your own spinning wheel with a larger orifice. Yes. Or else you're not going to be able to core spin. Unless you're Nancy Whaley. Because she figures out how to do art yarn with little orifices. Yeah, because she spins thin. Right. So then. It's hilarious. Beginner spinning. Yes. On January 6th from 5 to 8. Yes, ma'am. And I believe. Yep. Yep. So that's the first session there. January 7th is um, we have the uh, first of our new open groups for spinners. Yes. From 10, 10 to 10 1. To one. So we started a first Saturday of the month open group on a Saturday during the day to accommodate those people who can't do the Mondays, the second and fourth Mondays from five to eight. So that's our new group. It's open to everyone who spins. Just come and hang out with us for a few hours. But I also have a beginner's rigid heddle workshop scheduled from 10 to three that day. On January 11th, basic needle felting from five to eight. Okay. And on the 12th, intro to macro weaving. We're finally going to get it on there. 11 yes. to 4. So tell them what they have to have in order to take that. Intro to macro weaving. Whew. All right. You've, for intro to macro weaving, you need to have had the basic knots class mm -hmm. or the beginner's macrame. Correct. Okay. That is, please, for sure. One of those two. The basic knots will do, though. Correct. Because we only use pretty much two knots yeah. in our in our macro weaving. Um, you should have had rigid heddle weaving or, or triloom or, or tapestry. Correct. Because we're weaving on. We're this. weaving on the cords. Like, well, well but we're weaving. We're going to do the, the intro project is going to be on a weaving frame. No. Right? Remember, we changed it. We changed it to the... I have the beginner's thing over there hanging up. No, we're doing it from the cords. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Originally, we were going to do it on the framework, <clears> but when I was working on the framework... It wasn't hanging right. It's not It do, It's not hanging right. And I'd work. rather just teach you yeah. the way that you're going to do your stuff from you them. You can't really do macrame knots on a secure cord. You have to create you those cords. You have to create cords. the cords. And you can, but it's a little more advanced than probably an intro class would right. call for. So, yeah, we're going to do it on the actual <laughs> cords. So, I'm going to teach you, basically in that class, I'm going to teach you how to do your macro weaving framework and then how to weave it. And our cameraman, Bob, if we're, like, shifting like this, that camera is, like, tilting. I don't know what he's got going was... on. He must have, he had some Yuletide something, Yuletide beard this morning before he I decided know, eggnog. to. Eggnog, he likes eggnog. Oh, okay. He had eggnog before he did the video. So if our video tilts or something, that's his fault. That's got nothing to do with us. But so anyway, yeah. yeah. So with the macro weaving, I'll teach you the framework, and then I'll teach you how to weave the framework. Right. So, so rigid heddle or triloom weaving, just so you understand the weaving. The basic concept. So concept of it. And basic knots or the intro to macrame. Those are the things you need. Yep. And then we'll figure out all the rest of this stuff later. We'll make sure you have all that. But we're so excited because we were going to do it last year. Or, well, this year, in yeah. 2022. But we didn't have enough people who were comfortable with the knots to do it. Yeah. So we decided to wait and do it, offer it in January. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to do it Because you really once. need to practice your double half hitches and your square knots. Yeah. Like, it's really important. And and in, in the world of macrame in general, macrame, macro weaving... If you're going to go on to any type of advanced project and be successful, those two knots are your be-all, end-all foundation. Right. Like, you got to get comfortable with this. And I don't care if it's a right knot, a right square knot, or a left square knot. Get comfortable with it. The double half hitches, you got to be, especially, like, if you go past that intro to Macroweave and you want to go into actual design work with me, like, if you've seen some of the Macroweave wall hangings, they have, like, these leaves that are on there that trail across. That is all double half hitch work. Mm -hmm. And if you are not comfortable with double half hitches, don't even try. 
yeah. you'll lose your brain. So it's a great design element. It is. It's <clears throat> it's beautiful. I have on the the poster bed the mm -hmm. thing that I have. What do they call? It? Is it a poster canopy bed? Canopy bed. Um, <clears throat> I have some cords that are hung. I haven't worked them yet um, because I'm gonna do corner mm -hmm. things on the canopy bed that have those leaves worked into them that work down the pattern. It's so pretty. It's, yeah. It's it's cute. Yep, that'll be nice. Yep. Um, couple more days. January thirteenth, yep. we have another beginner spinning uh, first session that starts at ten. So we have an evening and we have a daytime. And then two weeks later from those sessions will be the second part yep. of that. And then on Saturday the fourteenth from eleven to two, an advanced spinning technique, hives and cocoons. I'm so excited yeah. for this. Yeah. So if you, yeah. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. And I will say, if there's anybody that um, wants to participate in the spinning with intention, either one or two, this Hives and Cocoons class will be very helpful for you mm -hmm. because it'll get you going with what you're going to be doing, part of what we're doing for our spinning with intention classes. Right, right. It'll help build the foundation. Right. So you can find the full calendar for January um, and probably February up on the homepage of the website, longtailknits.com, so that you have it. And please call if you have questions, stop in, sign up early for these workshops because, you know, we just need to make sure that we're prepared for how many people are going to be here. Make yep. sure you have everything that you need to take mm -hmm. that workshop. Um, if sure. there's homework that you need to do, we need to make sure that you've got that taken care of before you show up. So, yeah. Absolutely. We're going to have you, a lot you, of fun. Absolutely. Um, I will yes. say for the hives and cocoons class, just mm -hmm. as a little thing, you should have some core spinning background, even if it's minor. Well, that's why we're doing yeah. that first I'm class just, in January. Yeah. I just didn't. I wanted fourth, to say it out yeah. loud so that they understood that yep. if you haven't had some core spinning, you probably don't want to take that workshop till you get a core workshop under your belt. Right. And you could definitely do the core spinning on the 4th and then do the other one on, on the 14th. 14th. Easily. That's yeah. why I set it up that, what, that yeah, way. Yeah, we so had that it people, reversed and then she goes, I was we like, need to switch that. We need to switch this so people can have some, <laughs> they need some time to learn some stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm super excited. Um, I hope I hope everybody signs up. Oh, I we have a, a large enough class that we have to schedule two. Mm -hmm. Or she goes, Chris, bring your extra wheels. Okay. Because I have extra wheels if we need them. For beginners, but not for the Oh, no, 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 no. not ones. for those. For the beginners classes, I have extra wheels. <laughs> yep. Um, so today, yes. at the end of this video, it is my turn to teach you how to. God help us all. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to use a blending board. Yeah. So a lot of times, like you're out there, there's roving that you can spin from. There's bats you can spin from. And, you know, an investment in a drum carter is to make a bat to spin from mm -hmm. is a lot of money. The Ashford ones, they start at like $700 now. Right. And I mean, unless you're serious that, hey, yes. I only like to spin from bats, yeah. that's a lot of money to put into something. A blending board is a great, great alternative to owning a drum carter. Correct. And they are price-wise? $200, $205. Okay. All right. That's a great price because I have had mine for six years. Mm -hmm. And it's literally in about the same condition that it was from the day I got it, except it's a little hairy right now. Right. But um, looks the same. My needles are still great on it. So we're going to talk about this for a second. I'm going to move your coffee yeah, over. Yeah, that's fine. So this here is the Ashford blending board. I'm going to grab get, my things. You get a, a blending board brush. You get the two dowels to create your... I was like, please don't leave the brush <laughs> <Yeah>. at home. <laughs> to create the roll logs because these create roll logs. So this here is the cloth. They call this the cloth that has set teeth that are angled. These are angled upwards to grab your fiber so that you can apply them. And then the brush goes the opposite direction so that you can pack it down as you're going. Um, so this is the blending board itself. This part, these are fully assembled. The only thing you have to do is put the back on. This is called the keel. And this here can sit this way so you can set it on a table 
or you can turn it this way and you can put it on your lap and this goes between your knees to steady it so that you can work on your lap if you don't want to work on the table. What? You didn't know that? <laughs> that's what that's for. Oh, they never told me. Now you tell me. So there you go. And huh. it has rubber feet for your table. And go then figure. It sits at an angle so and that it makes you can, it really easy you can to work, work comfortably. Yes. So yeah. So and it has a nice carry handle. Yep. And these are the dowels for the Rolox, and we are going to... I'm going to show you how to use it. Yeah, we're going to show you how to do it. And one of the things I'm going to say about this is that, you know, you're not going to make a three or a four ounce bat. No. Okay? You're going to make something that's about an ounce. Mm -hmm. All right? However, you can make multiples of, multiples of them in the same amount of time that it takes you to make a four ounce bat on that drum carter. Because the drum carding bats, that takes about an hour a bat mm -hmm. for somebody who's fast. When I first started making bats, it was more like an hour and a half to yeah. make a bat because it's a lot of work. But I've learned some tricks over the time that speed it up and right. stuff like that. But anything you add to a bat, you can add to the board. Absolutely. And there's a lot of add-ins that you can put in here to glitz it up and you can create your own color combinations. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, we do have a drum carter here in the store. And you can use it. It's like, I think I charge $30 for you to use it for an hour. And depending on how large you make your bat, you can do two. Yeah. And you could. can buy, you can bring your own fibers or you can buy fibers that we have here in the store. And you can create your own bats. So it's something that that is out there for you yep. to do. I think it's fabulous. And if you've never played with uh, the blending boards, um, I don't know. Maybe I'll no, pick we, mine up by the drum carter. Yeah. And somebody could do the same, like rent it. Or on play. on some of those open, open spins, days. if you have a question about them, we can show you how yeah. to use them. Mine's always here on the open spin days for people to play with, as mm -hmm. well as my hand carters. Yeah. So. And you're going to find hand carters are great if you're doing something super small, but after a while, your wrists are really going to hurt. This is much easier. I've used my hand carters once. Yep. I... The reason I bought hand carters is so that I could bring them to share with all my friends. Right. <laughs> because used... my friends use them more than I do. Yeah, I use them more than she does. I'm, I'm like, like, hey, I need your hand carters. probably just be left at the store because <laughs> I never use them. Because, like, a lot of people use the hand carters to break up locks. Correct. And for me, I feel like that's sacrilege. Locks are supposed to be left structurally sound. And anytime people make fluff out of locks, I want to ball my eyes out. It either needs to be locks or it needs to be cloud or roving. Not this, oh, ooh, oh. <laughs> it just kills me. But yeah, so we're going to go on to part two of the video. Yeah. And I, probably with interjection from Janine, because she'll be filming, mm -hmm. um, will work gonna, you through. We're going to show you how to use this. How to roll a roll log. Yeah. All, All right. right. We'll see you in a bit. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. Chris here. I am going to show you how to use a blending board from Ashford. This is our blending board, like what we talked about in the video. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we didn't say, which cameraman Bob so graciously pointed out to us, is right here, there are two other holes on the back of your blending board. All that does is gonna raise and lower your angle so that how this blending board sits in front of you, I like it up a little higher. Mm -hmm. You can lower it or raise it, so that's that. So we have our blending board, we have our blending brush, and then we have the two dowels that come with it. These come in at the end, so I'm going to set these aside for now before I start drumming and driving everybody crazy. Janine's nodding her head because she knows Because she's been doing it before we started. Ba -da -da -da. Sorry, Stop. had to do it once. You know me. Okay, so the biggest thing I'm going to tell you first about blending fibers, be it on a drum quarter or a blending board, you have to have a foundation. So we all like to add frou-frou bits and bobbles. Some people don't. I know there's a few. Um, to our bats. This is the thing. So I have like solid roving. This is Falkland. This is like a bamboo merino blend. And this is just straight merino. Yes, covered in other fibers that it's been sticking in with. But these are like what I would start with because it's gonna help me make a solid foundation on my blending board. This is an old bat that, I don't know, I liked it and I wasn't sure. And 
I don't know. It just, there was something about it that was off. So I'm actually going to use pit, bits and pieces of an old bat to add to it. This, <laughs> does anybody know what this is? <laughs> sorry silk? I love sorry silk. Yeah. Love sorry silk. So you can see how this fiber, kind of how loose and stringy this is. If you were to put this into your foundation, it would fall apart. I am going to show you, you can see how part of this is bundled. That is because my daughter in her helpful ways was trying to help me make bats for a show one year and she did an entire bat. This is it right here <laughs> out of sorry silk. And I go, wow, that's lovely. But, um, you can't no, spin that. <laughs> not only can you not spin it, um, that's a really expensive bat. Um, but then I have some locks and I have some Angelina that I'm going to add to it. And with Angelina, a very little bit goes a very long way. Yep. You just need a little glitz and glam. We are not, um, I don't know. We're, we're not going for solid shiny. No, it should just, it should be a highlight. Yes. It's a little sparkle yes. in there. Yes. Because so, a lot of that can get scratchy too, so you need to make sure. It can. It can. So those are the fibers that I'm going to be working with. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll show you how to build a foundation. Janine's going to bring the camera over and we will start with our foundation. And Janine is more than welcome to talk while I do this part because I don't know if I can talk and work at the same time, but it'd be a first. <laughs> Keep going. Can you see my eyeball looking up at you? I did. All right. So basically, um, we refer to this as a painting technique where you're just putting stuff onto the board right yep this is painting and again right now i'm just building a foundation because if i don't have a little bit of a foundation i have no way of adding anything else to it right now you could actually use a undyed roving as well oh for your base absolutely yeah. and then add color to it yep it's really pretty. And you can see I'm using my brush and I'm coming in at the top. I don't ever really go in the middle and come down because then it doesn't have the same thickness. So I always go through the top and work down. And you definitely want to have these little fibers that trail because these come into um, play at the end of our little thing. Ugh. You can also, this is a perfect time if you want to put some striping of colors in as well. You can, so she's building on the same color. And yep, because I'm going to stripe it. She's going to stripe it. I want to stripe my thing. Yep. Yep. So she's just, just adding some a, more. Like a three color way stripe and then I'll add color to it. Perfect. So I like to build that first base until I don't see the any of the cloth behind it mm -hmm. because if you see cloth then you don't have a foundation right and so that blending board again it's a packing brush it just makes it so that it pushes everybody down so you can add more and maximize the amount that you can put into your roll logs yep. purple if i can find the beginning of it good yep. lord so your purple looks purple, but that teal looks blue. Oh, that's all right. On the phone. Well, you know. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. It also gives you an opportunity to pick up and place stuff. Yep. If you don't like where it's at, move it. And that's what I did. So I just felt like <coughs> I had a big clump at that top. <clears throat> so I like to make sure I get as close to my sides as possible because if I'm using this, I am making sure I'm utilizing my full space. Right, right. And why not? Why wouldn't you? And if you get a big clump, just pick it up and move it along. So the other thing that you're doing as you're moving that down those... Um, the tines. The tines is you're actually drafting it. Mm -hmm. So you're removing big bunches and clumps and things as well. So this is... This is that process. And you can see, oh, get out of there. I'm not ready for green yet. Yep. 
Um, see how I went over this section with my brush? Mm -hmm. That's flattened out and gone down. This is still poofy. All right. So that's what your brush does. Your brush releases the air from it so that we get more compact. And if Janine comes in close, you'll see the areas where you can still see my cloth through. So the goal is to come in and cover that cloth. Okay. So I'm going to work that. And for the sake of the video, guys, I will tell you, I am probably not going to fill this all the way to the top because we'll be here for like, it'll be a 45 minute video because I am not very fast at this. Well, and I also like to play with yeah. color. So this gives you that opportunity to be very creative and intentional with what you're sticking in mm -hmm. your bat or Rolog's. Yeah, so basically are just small bats. Yes, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a foundation. I'm going to add some fun to it, and then I'm going to top with a second foundation and maybe a few bits. I'm not going to go like all the way to the very top of the tines like I would normally, because usually I jam pack these tines as much as I possibly can. Because, like I said, if I'm going through this Herculean effort to make something, I'm using all the space they give me. Now, do you have a drum carter at home? Sure, yeah, I do, that big one. Okay, so this is what she uses to do bats that are sold in the store and at her fiber shows Yeah, is the drum carter because she can get more on there. Yeah. You can get three ounces of fiber. Yeah. I almost said pounds. It's ounces. Yeah, people. and I can usually, there are times, <clears throat> depending on the fiber I'm using, sometimes my drum carter, I can get a good four four to four and a half ounces mm -hmm. on a bat sometimes um and i'll be honest so my bats are not all the same price because sometimes i'm making a bat and i run out of the colors that i'm using in a bat and you might see you might see a 4.2 ounce bat and then you might see a 2.9 ounce bat both of them the same colors but i didn't have enough to make two four ounce bats it just makes it so that i can utilize my Mm -hmm. all of my fiber and also some people some people want a full eight ounces of bats so they can make a larger project some people are like no i just need to make a little so a two and a half ounce bat or a three ounce bat is not a big deal plus cost of um bats also depends on the fibers that are going in as well yep if you're putting mohair and blocks in it's going to cost more absolutely I see a tiny little bit of stuff over here, so I'm just going to cover, but you can see, so I striped it, okay? Ah! Sometimes you get a very thick area in your roving that you're putting on, and it's like, takes Herculean effort to drag it over. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice little base to play with now. So now I can choose... Like, what do I really want to add to this? Well, I know I want to add some sari silk, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my sari silk. I'm going to break it apart because you really, really don't want this clumpy. It's going to clump to a certain extent, but you can see I'm like just painting. That's all I'm doing. I'm just painting color work in. And wherever the teeth grab, that's kind of how we just let it go. Ah! <laughs> And a you more. only need a little. You do and you can see I'm not putting it over here because it's kind of going to get <clears throat> lost over there. So what's the point? Yeah, same color. You know, I don't need that sorry silk over there. <clears throat> so then I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to brush that down. Then I'm going to get some of my lock. Bob's locking, liking what you're doing. He's over there bobbing his head. All right. So <clears throat> I got my clumps of locks, right? So you want to be careful when you're putting locks in because they're going to they're gonna break apart. And it does break my heart a little bit. But locks are going to be long pieces that end up in here. And depending on how you put it in, you can see this is more like a cloud. Well, if I do this and bring it down, I can leave a little bit of lock in there. So it's just, when you go to brush this, like, you got to make sure that you're going to... Okay, 
only brushed down. Let me get in here so they can see. See the locks? There you go. And I'm leaving those alone. Like I'm only going to brush to the lock and I'm lifting my brush up because I want to keep a little lock in there. You know, just a little. And I'm going to do it through the whole section. And again, it's not something you have to do. Locks aren't for everyone. I just happen to really, I love locks. And it locks just adds a little I bit of struggle color. struggle with. So I'm one of those people that she doesn't like because I'll take them, comb them out and use them for something else. <laughs> Be still my heart. Yeah. For those of you that like, like know me well, you know I love to lock spin. I love to put locks in my core work. I am all about, I am all about the locks. All right, so now I picked up a little bit of the old bat. Sounds like I'm talking about a little old lady. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm going to bring this in. You got him shaking his head now. Well, hey. This can be so cool because now you've got that neon. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add there. a little bit of fun. Oh, that's cool. And you can see I'm not like... I'm not overdoing the bits of color. I'm just giving enough for interest because I don't want to lose my foundation color. And some people will load it to where they have so many colors going on, and that's fine too. There's, there's really no wrong way to make a bat. It's do you like it when it's done? Yep. That's the most important part because if you don't like what you did, then pull it apart, get it out of there, and turn it into something else. Gift which, it to somebody else. <laughs> gift it. <laughs> gift it. That's funny. You funny, girl. All right. So see how we have <clears throat> that middle layer? Now I'm going to come back. And watch your hand. So I want to show. Yep. Here's along the bottom edge. She still has everything left there. So that when we use the dowels, it's easier to grab the fiber. Yep. And I'm just going to come in and I'm coming over with a little more of whatever color is in that center. And I am going to overlap just a hair into my outside colors. Because what I don't want is I don't want to create three individual pieces that don't coexist together. Right. You want them to to bleed and blend into each other enough so everything catches and and lives together in perfect harmony. Oh my god, I sound like a Hallmark commercial. Or it a Folger, or a Folgers year. coffee commercial. <clears throat> I mean, you know? All right. So I got some more black and I didn't have to cover everything. See, I'm going to come down like this over that black and I still left some of my other stuff poking through. Ugh. Gotta be strong to rip some of this stuff apart. Good lord. Move your hands farther apart. It's I know. I'm just impatient. <laughs> have you met me? I have. All right. I want to rip where I want to rip. Forget them. Who cares about staple length? I'm bound and determined to get some color at that top. It's making me crazy. There we go. Got more in your other hand. I know. I'm trying to get my brush. And I want to see if I want to add more or not. I'm going to do just a little bit like across mm -hmm. there to go back over that black. See, I was going to ask if you were going to oh, layer yeah. those over the black too. Yeah, because if I layer it a little over the black, then I've layered it this way, this way, you know. Mm -hmm. It has multitude of layers. It's a good thing you're not videoing my face right now. My right eyeball has decided that allergy season has hit and I am like, I look like I'm crying. We've had a lot of rain lately. No, I can't. <laughs> All right, what's my last color? Purple. purple. All right, let's get this purple in here. Now I will tell you, like if you've never worked on a drum carter or a blending board, um, these little tines, like you can hurt. Yeah. Like, they don't hurt for me to sit here and push on them, but when you're dragging stuff across it, you can, you can see yeah. the marks. Yeah. Um, you can catch your skin on the top knuckle, which I constantly do. So I try not to do like this. I try to do like this, because when I pull down this way, those little tines are ripping across my skin. So it's it's nicer for me, and it should be nicer for everybody if they just keep your fingers away from the tines. The drum carter 
is 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 evil. That one you really got to watch what you're doing. <clears throat> Ashford came out with <clears throat> their electric drink powder. <laughs> but it has a lot of guards on it, so it helps keep your hands away from the stuff. Yeah. I don't know if I want an electric one. I've been in debate on that. Um, it's pretty pricey. It's over a thousand dollars. I so. know. Guys, come buy a lot of bats for me, and maybe I can afford an electric drum carter. There you go. You she know. can make them faster. I think I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of sorry silk over on this side, just because I like it, and I like having that turquoisey teal color go all the way through my project. Mm -hmm. We. It's so much fun. Yeah, then when you roll it up, it is actually going to be on the inside. Yep. And then the very last thing. It's on top. Thank you. There you go. I'm going to add. I'm going to come in here, and you can see. I am just dropping a little bit of Angelina on here. I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to overload it, especially because this is not a very big bat. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just... Just a little sparkle. Just a little sparkle. A little goes a long way. It really does. It does. And I could have layered this in between. Mm -hmm. So that sparkle can go anywhere. It doesn't have to go on the last layer. Mm -hmm. I just like it on the last layer because it becomes a part of my center. So when it becomes a part of my center, mm -hmm. it comes out in all different places. Yeah. Just remember what you see on top is going to be in the middle of your roll log or back. When yes. You take it off. Yes. All right. I almost... I almost blew through my lock. Stop it. I just All right. It up a little bit. I did. So I am coming down right now just to really make sure that everything is down and in there. So let me do this real quick here. Yep. So as you can see from the side, you've got layers. You can see the layers right here. And you can see I didn't go all the way up to the top of my right, vines. Right, right. I could have put another two or three layers yep. on top of it. So, here. and this is what it looks like all the way across from this direction. Okay, dowel right. rod time. Dowel rods. So what I do before I even get my dowel rods is I kind of come in here and I just lift this section just a little bit. And it doesn't matter that it's not even. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, there's no hard, fast rule on that. Take my dowel rods, one underneath and one on top and you squeeze them together and you pull down and you start to roll and I use my thumbs at the base and I pull and I roll now right here you can tell I didn't go far enough down because it's not catching my fiber because my black was a little shorter so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pull this black up and I'm gonna start again and I'm gonna actually make sure I'm catching my black fiber this time and I'm going to, oh my goodness, there we go. There you go. All right, so I have it caught, and I'm going to pull down, and I'm going to lift, and I'm going to roll. Right, so basically she's drafting it a little bit as she's going onto the dowel. There you go. And she's lifting. And she'll probably get all these on one because there's not a whole lot of fiber, but it Some could, people have to break it into two yeah, or three. three. Yeah, I've seen. How? And the tine will go in your thumb if you're not careful. <laughs> He's laughing at you. I know. <laughs> Leave it to Chris. And you can see, like, if I had a heavier, a heavier bat on there, a heavier amount, like, pulling down on that to... Like, you've got to brace your thumbs. You have to brace. It's the only way you're going to get that fiber to lift off of there. i got to pull it on my lap, guys. Sorry. You're fine. There we go. I'm going to laugh when this is so tight I can't get those out. I've done that before, too. Mm -hmm. So one thing is, when we're done, these dowel rods have to be able to come out of the center. <laughs> and sometimes we don't know our own strength and how tight we pull. Now, see this piece that's left here, mm -hmm. this left behind piece? You can do one of two things. You can try to get in there and lift it, but if it's so far down, like I can catch it like this. I don't have a little pick. I know. Hold on. Ah, there we go. I think my fingernails might do it. There. there. You go. So I kind of pick it up, yes. and I'll unroll a little bit, 
That's and where I just you need to keep a double point. <laughs> yeah, double point needles. <laughs> and metal very <laughs> helpful. But yeah, if you get pieces that just strip down <clears throat> on you, just use your double point, pick them up, and roll them back up into your roll log. No fiber left behind. No fiber left behind. And you can see I got to the end and it kind of popped off my my board. So I just kind of pull a little bit on this last end. And I wrap it around. All right. Now the fun trick that I hate, which is why I use my drum carter. Mm -hmm. Because getting these little bad boys to come out of here. You got to pull one. I know. But so <clears throat> what I do is I take one hand here and one hand here and I kind of rock a little first to try to loosen that center up. And then I hold and pray. Which one wants to give first? Oh my goodness. There, there we go. go. Oh, it's a chore <laughs> every time. All right. So in the world of roll logs, we have a roll log. Now, you have to remember, I didn't put any fun and fancy stuff on the outside, okay? So the roll log doesn't look like it's going to be much, okay? However, when I start to spin this, when you're spinning from the roll logs, you spin from an end. And I'm going to do this because I don't care, and I'm just going to use the fiber anyway. But when I start to spin and draft, like as I come out, all of those little nifty bits that got put into there, depending on how I'm drafting, you can see they're all gonna come out eventually. Yep. And you can see all those different fibers that were in between the layers are coming see, out. You can see some Angelina through there. Yep, it's all in there. And it's just coming out, little bits and bobbles. Yep. And as you go, like depending on how thick or how thin you're spinning, like, see, you've got a lot, like, that's a large, large little bit of sari silk. That's going to make a great little color. And if you were core spinning, this would be perfect. This would be amazing for core spinning. Yep. Um, but <clears throat> it's just a very simple way to make something different than what you see on, a, on in roving. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be creative. I like doing bats and roll logs out of all my leftover bits and bobbles. Because everybody who spins has, oh, I have this little chunk of black. I have this little chunk of blue. I have a bag of Angelina that somebody gave me. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to put all those things together. Um, I will tell you, if you go over onto Ashford's YouTube channel or even onto their blog, you will see some blending board things from them. Mm -hmm. And they talk about striping and they talk about different techniques with the blending board. So do hit them up for more information as well. Hope you yep. guys have a wonderful rest of your Christmas day. <laughs> and we hope that you enjoyed this. And don't forget, <clears throat> like and share. Like and share. Find us on the Blue Fiber Tree on Instagram, the Blue Fiber Tree on Facebook, longtailknits.com, alchemy.com, longtailknits on Facebook, and... And alchemy and on Facebook, alchemy on Facebook, and <laughs> alchemy on Instagram. There are so many places to find us, guys. You can't miss us. You cannot. Okay? And plus, our personal pages we share and like everything. Yes. And if I can get it together, you'll have a nice little um, treat over um, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day weekend. Um, we we have some bloopers from the last uh, twelve <laughs> months of yeah. filming to share with you, and <clears throat> most of them are Chris laughing and throwing her head down. Or laughing and hiding behind the desk. Or, or making faces at Bob. Getting up and walking away. So, yes, yes. we had a lot of fun. And yes. it's been a year. It's been a year. Go wow. to. Yay. Thank you so much for supporting us during this last year. It's been a ton of fun. We will continue to do how-tos and coffees and chats. And maybe throw some extra stuff in here and there. All right? You guys take care. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye.